Hi there everyone, so this is a quick video uh, to give you a, a very quick overview of the uh, MetaRealStage user interface. So this is the MetaRealStage, uh, MetaReal homepage, um, and if you've never, if you don't have an account, you'll go here and sign up. Um, and you can either sign up using a Google account, or you can create an account directly. Um, either way, what will happen is that you'll get an email, um, an activation email, and uh, you can uh, then click on that link to, uh, to activate your account and log in. I've already got an account, so I'm going to log in here. And I'm going to use my Google account. And once we've logged in, we arrive here on the project browser. So these are all the projects in my uh, in my uh, in my account. If I um, if it's the first time I use uh, first time I access my account, we'll actually go straight to the video tutorial. Um, and this is a full getting started tutorial. It's about 30 minutes long. Takes you through all the aspects of uh, building tours with uh, Material. Um, there's also an ensemble project that you can install into your account. Um, that's actually this project here. Um, so we'll go. We'll go take a look at this as a give you an example of a, a finished project. So once we come into a project, um, this is what we call the project dashboard, and there's a bunch of sections on the page. I'm going to close these up so we can look at them all at once. So published versions. Published versions contains all the um, external public publishing links uh, for your finished tours. And you won't see that till you've, you've published, started to publish tours. Rooms contains all the uh, the rooms that you're going to reconstruct to make your your tour. Right, we've got a, an empty room there. I'm going to delete that. Um, and the place where we start is at the bottom here, source images. So the first thing we're going to do when we create a new project typically will be to upload some images. Uh, for now, they need to be um, equi rectangular panoramas. And once they're uploaded and processed, uh, they'll all appear here. So here we can see we've got a bunch of images for a tour. Um, and these are all the images that will come in the uh, sample tour when you install it. And so typically uh, what we would do is uh, select, say, uh, a couple of panoramas that are from the same room and then go and create the room with the room editor. Uh, because this is already a, a completed tour, what I'm actually going to do is go open a room. So uh, I'm going to just find downstairs office. And by control, hitting, holding down control when I click on uh, the, uh, the room, I can open uh, the room editor. Um, in a new tab, um, and Metareal is uh, stage is designed to support multi-tab workflows. So this means that we can be very, uh, it can be quite quick. I can have a number of rooms open, maybe a tour editor as well, um, and uh, always go back to my dashboard. Um, so uh, essentially, the uh, the rest of the process of creating tours involves these three sections. Uh, default settings allows me to decide what units I want my tour to uh, show. Um, uh, whether I want to be metric or US Imperial, and also the lens height that I'm going to apply. Um, it's very important to get, if you want your tour to have accurate scale, um, it's very important to have a precise lens height entered here for the nodal point of the lens from the floor. Um, this is uh, what we use to uh, calculate the scale um, uh, and, and of, the, of the entire tour and the dimensions of the tour. Also, you can set the nadir um, radius. Um, so this basically controls the size of the Nadia patch uh, if you choose to use one. Um, so for the rest of the process of creating the tours, you essentially reconstruct your rooms in the room editor here. Um, and you do that by selecting the images, opening the room editor. And then once you've reconstructed all your rooms, you then open the, edit, the tour editor and connect them all together um, and configure the rest of the options for your tour. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the room editor. Um, this is the room editor. Uh, this is a completed uh, completed room. We can see in this room um, we've got two panoramas loaded. We could over here add more panoramas if we wanted, if we had like more, more more shots, more points of view in the room. But for a room like this, we really only need a couple of points of view. So you can see I can move over there, um, and I've got a bunch of a uh, bunch of bits, geometry and volumes and so on added. Um, and my, my two panoramas are stitched into my room. I can also see that I've got um, two windows marked out, and if I go over here, um, I've got a doorway marked out as well. Um, so on the left here, we have the thumbnails, um, uh, and next to the thumbnail panel, we have the tool panel. Um, these are uh, basically the tools we're working with on the, uh, on the reconstruction, and they're grouped into menus and submenus. So I've got a draw tool, a snap tool, cube tool, a cylinder tool, a door tool, and a window tool. Um, and you select submenu by holding down the button or doing double click. Um, and we 
go back to select. Uh, if I just have the select tool open here, um, I can see um, over here on the right I have a helper panel. Um, and when I don't have another tool selected, uh, I'll just see the uh, set of properties for the current panorama. Um, and I can change the panorama. Um, in this case, we can see this is the reference panorama. It has a little R here. And so it gives us some information about the file information, uh, the leveling and orientation information. Um, we can change the lens height and the nadir on a per panorama basis if we need to, but it's using the default settings that come from the defaults. Um, and that's pretty much it. For each other uh, tool, we have a contextual um, helper menu. You can actually help a um, panel, and you can hide that out of the way if you need to anytime. You can also hide the thumbnails um, once you've done your registration. If you're just working on, for example, volumes, you probably don't need to have the thumbnail panel visible. So that gives us a nice big area uh, to work on. So that's pretty much it for the uh, uh, the room editor. If I go back to the project dashboard now, um, uh, I can go and open, I'm going to control click edit tour, um, and that opens the tour editor while leaving the room editor open. Um, so if I wanted to make incremental changes, iterative changes to any room reconstruction uh, while working on my tour, I could easily pop back and forth between the two without having to reload the page. So this is the tour editor similar layout to the uh, room editor except on the left here now we have the rooms um, there's only one that's not been assembled we start by looking at the plan view and you can see all the rooms are connected together um, and uh, I could drag and drop uh, this this other room um, and it's just gonna land on my my space like that um, so I can drag my rooms about um, and I could uh, connect them together or uh, in fact my, my tour is already built so I'm just going to delete the new room um, and we can here, here we can organize our, uh, our tour uh, into a building and organize each floor so we've got two floors there um, we've got a number of views here I can actually switch on the nav map and this shows me all the navigation connections between the panoramas in my tour um, and I can go ahead and uh, edit those um, if I want to um, I can also uh, change the transition type from uh, travel to teleport so for example sometimes I might want to have the option to go through from two sort of not uh, visually connected spaces say go through a wall or something and rather than be uh, forced to slide through a wall if that was or, or, or through um, uh, to actually sort of travel between the two spaces I can just teleport between the two spaces um, we have a couple of views uh, so this is the plan view I can also go to the model view um, which allows me to see the, uh, the three-dimensional model of my reconstructed uh, uh, space um, and I can also see my, my navigation map in that view as well um, I'll switch that off and then finally we have the preview of the tour and this shows um, the tour what the tour will look like when it's published um, so uh, we have the player edit player interface and I've got my, uh, my uh, room selector and I have my user interface for my player um, and I have a helper here that allows me to control all those things so for example I can set the tour starting point so this is the thumbnail that the tour will have before I open it I can decide whether I want to start in the tour view or in the model view um, and I can control which navigation elements are going to be visible uh, in the tour so for example I can hide the title and location I can hide the, uh, the icon at the top right here I can decide not to have a floor plan and not to have a model, so, uh, or I can have a one or other or both. I can show the room chooser or not, um, and I can show the navigation type, so uh, whether it's shiny bubbles or floor discs. Um, I can also control things like field of view, uh, modify the title, um, and uh, supply a, mad uh, a logo for the top right corner, and an adder patch. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, for uh, what you uh, can do in the tour editor. Um, the only other thing is to, you can go here and publish the tour and once the tour is published it'll show up in this list of published versions. So the date you published it, um, the platform you published to, um, right now we support WebGL, um, I have a dev account so I can package a project as well, uh, it's really just for support. Um, and so every time you publish, you just get a new entry in this list. You don't overwrite the previous entry. Um, if you want to 
update a tour on a link that you've already created that maybe is shared with somebody else for an integration or whatsoever, um, you can go ahead here and uh, just refresh the tour. If you want to take a published tour offline, you can just uh, hide it like this and it will no longer be accessible until you uh, reactivate it on the same link. Um, and the other thing, uh, the other option you have here is to be able to grab an embed code uh, for the tour. And this is, you can see what that will look like there. Um, that's pretty much it for the editors and what's needed for creating tour. Obviously, you can delete any published tour using the X button there. Um, you can update the location, set location for your tour using the Google Map integration here. Um, the only other two areas to look at are usage. So the usage tells you uh, the number of days in your current billing cycle, uh, when your next billing date is, um, shows the amount of data total used by your account this month. This month. Um, now, if uh, it looks like you're going to run out of quota before your next uh, billing date, uh, we, uh, we do send you emails, we warn you, and we also uh, indicate how much quota you'll basically hit, uh, you're going to use up by next billing date, and we also warn you uh, what the date is you're going to run out. Um, there are a bunch of options here. You can actually go look at the uh, usage per tour here. And you can actually see how many, um, what each tour is using, uh, and um, you can take any tours offline that you want in order to uh, limit the amount of quota that's used by your account, if need be. Um, the other thing we can go look at is billing. So this shows uh, your transaction history. Um, it shows your current subscription type. In my case, it's an internal developer account um, and the billing date. Um, you've also got access to uh, your Metreo user profile, the support portal, and your payments portal, um, where you can uh, modify your payments information. Um, finally, if you click on manage subscription, um, we're not going to see much here, but because I'm using a developer account, we don't see the options. There aren't any, there's nothing I can buy, but basically, um, if you're looking at a, uh, um, uh, a professional uh, or a creator account, you'll see a bunch of options for add-ons and upgrades that you can uh, buy to uh, uh, increase the amount of quota on your account. Um, so back to stage. And that's pretty much it for, uh, for the user interface overview for Material Stage. Thank you very much.